Examiner, would you like me to chalk my wheels? This is one of the first things you want to say to the examiner. Ask them if you want them to chalk, if, you, if they would like for you to chalk the wheels. All right? Then you're going to announce, I'm now entering the cab with three points of contact. And then just enter the cab with three points of contact. thing you want to do you want to start knocking off your safety stuff right one of those things gonna be the seat belt my seat belt is properly mounted secure it's not worn torn afraid it latches and it unlatches and it's adjusted to me then you got three pieces of emergency equipment right so you're gonna have your overhead you have your fuses and your overhead bin somewhere up in here right then behind the seat or wherever it's at in the truck it may be in the side compartment but in the trucks that we're using it's going to be behind the back seat and that's going to be three red bi-directional reflected triangles underneath the back seat also in the trucks that we're going to use right our fire extinguisher that's the last third thing we got to talk about and that's going to be right up here in the front and it's going to be a fully rated and dated fire extinguisher right 5bc fully charged rated and dated properly mounted secure right here on the floor in front of you so now you got all your safety stuff out the way, right? And then you're just gonna look forward and you're gonna start talking about your glass, right? When you lock in on your glass, stay on all of your glass. That way we're not really jumping around, right? So you got your hood mirrors and you got your left and your right flat and convex mirror. Properly mount secure. They're not cracked or broken. There's no illegal stickers or obstructions that's blocking your view and they're adjusted to you, right? Then you got your windshield and your windows properly mounted secure they're not cracked or broken there's no legal stickers or instructions that's blocking your view they're clean and they're in good condition all right at that point we will come down here to this wheel because it's right here in front of us right steering wheel has no more than two inches or 10 degrees of free play your city horn works and that's going to take us into our air horn <clears throat> at that point we can't go no further right because we don't preach everything we can preach with the truck um, off so now we got to turn the truck on so we can finish the pre-trip right the end cab inspection All right, the next thing we're gonna do is what they call the safe start, right? We're gonna make sure the truck is in neutral the brakes are set all that means that these are pulled out And we're gonna proceed with our safe start now keep in mind to, to correctly do a safe start your foot has to be on the wheel I, I mean your um, yeah, your foot has to be on the brake pedal. Sorry about that So you put your foot on the brake you will turn the key to the oil position and your ABS light gonna come on and go off. And that indicates that it works. You gotta voice that. Simply after that point, just start the truck. Now, once the truck is running, you see the instrument cluster here, it comes alive. So we gotta start talking about that stuff that's coming on in there, right? One of the things it's gonna be is your, is your oil pressure gauge. And it's at normal operating range and there's no warning lights on. Then you got your water temperature gauge, right? It's at normal operating range and it is no warning lights on, right? Your primary and secondary gauges are building up to the governor cutoff of 120 to 140 PSI. The next thing we have is our volt meter. Our volt meter reads 14.2 volts. That indicates the alternator is charging the battery. Now, you pretty much still went through the instrument uh, cluster right here, right? The next thing we're going to talk about is our lights. Because we need our lights, right? So we need to talk about them cut the, the low beams on and you got to point at the indicators as you do this right so you'll cut the, the low beams on my low beam indicator works my high beam indicator works my left turn signal indicator works my right turn signal indicator works and my four-way flasher indicator works all right let's cut that off the next we're gonna think we're gonna talk about is our windshield wipers right so might as well get them out the way my windshield wiper arms and blades are properly mount secured. They're not cracked into broken. Um, it's not missing that's supposed to the blades are not worn, torn, or frayed, and it smoothly wipes the windshield. And my windshield cleaner works as well. Alright. At that point, we pretty much knocked everything out, right? But I always leave one thing behind, right? And that's my uh defrosting heat because that tells me. When I, when I get ready to do this, I done knocked all this other stuff out, right? So that's just how I do it, right? So I'm going to cut that to that right there, which is the defrost indicator and the heat indicator. I'm going to cut it on. I'm simply going to say my defrost works correctly. My heat works correctly on all speeds. After that, 
I'm done. Now it's time for the break portion. And that's this is very important. You gotta get this on point. Alright? So, first thing you wanna announce is your primary and secondary. You gotta let them know what's going on with them, right? And this is how you do that. I will now do my tug test with my primary and secondary gauges at the governor cutoff of 120 to 140 psi. I will now do a tug test. Now, keep in mind, if you're not for sure you had governor cut off, and this is very important, just say I will assist it, right? To do so, all you're going to do is span it down to about 200. Put your foot on the accelerator pedal, and then bring the RPMs up to about 15 grand until you hear that sneeze. And you must ask the examiner if you can do this. You need to, uh, to assist it. You ask them, they will always say yes. Thing you're gonna do is cut the key on. You're gonna let your gauge is sweep, and the third thing you're gonna do is push in both your knobs, both your brake valves, and push them all the way in. At this point, I'm waiting on my primary and secondary gauges to level out right around 100 psi. So I'm gonna sit here and wait on that. All right, and leveled out. Once that happens, I'm going to tell the examiner I'm going to apply my foot to the brake for one minute. And in that minute, I'm not going to lose no more than 4 PSI. Will you time me? They're going to say yes, my foot is going to go to that brake. Now, they may wait a whole minute, they may not. We're just going to fast forward and pretend that minute went by. As soon as, as soon as that examiner says time, the first thing I'm going to say, see, I did not lose no more than 4 PSI in that minute. I will now fan my brakes down to 55 PSI and I'm going to get a warning light and buzzer. Keeping my foot on that brake, I'm going to look at the examiner. I'm going to say, see there? There's my warning light and buzzer. I will continue to fan my brakes down to 40 PSI, at which point both these knobs right here, they're going to pop out. All right? And then I'm just going to do it and make it happen. Both my, once both my knobs popped out, I'm going to look at the examiner. See, there you go. Both my valves have popped out. That completes my air brake test. I will now do a safe start. During that whole time, my foot was still on the brake. So therefore, all I have to do is reach down and fire up the truck. All right. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to ask the 
examiner to help me check my lights on my tractor and my trailer. All right? If you take your time and do it that way, that is a passing grade at the DMV here in South Carolina. All right? It's a wrap.